Good. What up, nerds? Welcome to another splendiferous episode of Straight Chilling. My name is Bob, and I'll be your host for the evening. This is episode number 191, recorded Sunday, December 2nd, 2018. Tonight, we're going to be discussing Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter, as was chosen by the lovely Patreon, Mr. Jose S. Thank you, sir. Uh, before you get into the review tonight, let me introduce everyone else on the show. First up, calling in from Santa Barbara, California, my boy Randy Gandy. G. Landy. I have a feeling that I'm going to sound like a robot right now because you do for me. Uh, oh. Thank you, Internet. Oh, you sound, you sound good, uh, Randy. Sound good. Well, good. You, you, you exercise the demons, I guess. I think you like popped right out of it as you started to speak because like your video was a little frozen mm -hmm. and then you popped like right. It was perfect timing. Once you pop, the fun don't stop. That's Popping and locking. That's, I've heard you say it before. Last but not least, calling in from Southern Korea, my boy, Soju. What up? It's your boy, Soju. Legit got twisted this weekend. <laughs> I got so twisted that I couldn't even record a short rant for you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is unusual because that's usually not a problem. You had so much soju that you couldn't even complain about Halloween anymore. <laughs> that was not the request I got. True. That's right. You were supposed to talk about how much you love us or something. That's what Nicole wanted you to Well, do. yeah, I got a couple requests. So uh, every now and then I'll just go on a soju bender, of course. And uh, <laughs> I've been... Uh, we're trying to make it this thing, I guess, where I record these bender shorts where I just like rant about something for like 10 minutes. So I send it to the Slack. I got Rob Zombie, just I guess as a filmmaker in general, which should be good once I eventually record that one. Oh, and right. I got a, a positive <laughs> rant. Nicole wanted me to say how much I loved everyone. So that one will be coming too. I'll have to double down. On so, so she wants you to lie to us. <laughs> I love you, man. You're my so, boy. That sounds and, uh, like riveting fucking podcasting if I do say so much <laughs> Hey, there. You know, it's solo stains. You know what you. Hey, gonna look, do? <laughs> I'll watch it. I'll watch a video of anybody praising me. That sounds great. <laughs> so I'm not even sure what kind of format that's going to be in. I always just ship it off to Bob and let him handle that. <laughs> yeah, it'll it'll be coming coming at you somehow, some way. <laughs> You'll be getting Justin in your ear holes more Justin than you want. Let me tell Whoa. you what. Um. Few housekeeping items going on this week, yeah. So we've got a winner for the December poll pick. That winner is The Shining. Finally, That's good a movie. Surprise. <laughs> well, I mean, it's a surprise because Misery was in the lead for like the entire run, pretty much up until the very, very end. There, it was a close call. Yeah, huh. which I'm surprised about, but. The people's uh, book. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, Missouri. I mean, I'm not surprised people want to want us to do The Shining at all. Yeah, but I mean, come on. I'm surprised that it came through in the clutch like that. Or it came down to the wire. I thought there would be a clear yeah. winner this round, but nope. It was a it was a neck and neck race again. It was close. Yeah. I'm excited to watch it. I haven't seen it in a bit. Yeah, it's yeah, been a little I, while. I watched it last year. I think it's so long. <laughs> Need to but, get a, it's a long one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a good. Uh, movie. We got a uh, so the January poll pick is posted on Patreon, uh, which you can vote. Uh, you can vote on there if you support us at the five dollar level or above. And the poll is uh, it's going to be between The Descent, Pieces, and Scanners. Those are the films you can vote on for January. Why is yeah, that? We got a fun theme for next month. It's like a, a regret. <laughs> it's a regret. 
<laughs> Coming into our, the new year with our <laughs> with our regrettable old scores. Yeah. Yeah, we uh you know, we we haven't always been super sober while recording these episodes, so sometimes <laughs> we give scores about? that we come come to regret. Yeah, and, so uh, all three of these movies we've covered before, but it's been a long time, like three uh, years at least. Yeah, at probably. least yeah, three no. years. So we've been going on for four years now, and so yeah, these are all probably within the first year of casting, maybe year and a half. So Help us not write like, some wrongs. Yeah, they're not like readily available either, are they? Like even the descent, they are I think, on was our the archives. Closest. Okay. They are, they're on our archives, but not the one there. It's not available on like Apple or anything like that. Spotify, it's only yeah. on our archives on uh, the website. on our website through our website. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. If you okay. do want to hear those, I don't recommend it, but you can. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go back and listen to the one and hear whatever is chosen. I'm gonna listen to the old episode, which I never do. I never listen to this shit. And um, I'm gonna listen just how wrong we had it. And just how stupid we sound, so that we can sound slightly <laughs> less stupid this time around. Yeah, some of these, like, I don't even think I was on for scanners. I don't know if it was before I joined or if it was just that was I missed very out. early in the run. So, it, if it like if it legit was before I joined, it means it was like one of the first five episodes ever because yeah. <laughs> I yeah. joined like episode five. We were doing mm-hmm. scanners outside at my parents house i yeah. remember that that's a, okay it was so time. yeah probably it, I, like i really think that falls within like the first four episodes then probably yep yeah which is kind of nuts yeah uh the only uh bit of uh news that we have to talk about or um housekeeping that we have to talk about is we got a new patron someone new has joined Woo! the rooms. new Shout player outs. approaching <laughs> yeah Shouts outs to Mr. Jose M for joining us on the Patreon. Thanks, Jose. Um, thanks, yeah, man. thanks. We got the Jose squad rolling <laughs> in this squad. month. Squad. A couple Jose's yeah. this month. That's uh, squad yeah. deep. Uh, Good so news Jose's for gonna us. Be, he's going to be picking a movie for us to review. Uh, TBD. So hold on to your shorts. We're gonna cool. we're gonna be figuring that out soon. Very cool, um, and I think that fills out just in time to fill out the year. We hold uh, like a five pay- Patreon spots, right? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Where they ch- where you can choose the movie. We hold it. What is that? Every like three or four months, we lock mm-hmm. it to like five because we got to cover the new movies and all the poll picks and all that. So we just filled out our fifth spot for the term. So that's mm-hmm. nice. Yeah, we're going to be uh, shutting down the uh, the tier on which everybody has joined so far to pick a movie, and we're going to opening up a new one come the new year yeah. so that we can have some fresh picks going in. So that means anybody, if you picked before and we've said, nah, no more to you, that, <laughs> that rule is over. You can yeah, pick you're again. Fresh. You can, you can yeah. bribe us to watch horse shit again, <laughs> Mikey. Um, <laughs> oh, man. I, I, kept, I kept meaning to tell you guys uh, that uh, Books a Million had their, or not Books a Million, uh, Barnes and Noble had their Criterion <laughs> sale or whatever, and Mikey and I went up there and got some movies, and he bought that Sallow movie that's like one of the worst oh movies. Oh my ever. god! I'm not familiar. Yeah, with that. that's that's the Hundred Years of Sodom, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. oh my god! <laughs> of course, Batman. of course he would. That was literally the only other movie I was thinking of after we watched the Serbian film. That was like that's the only one like off the top of my head like that See, I know. I told him that while we were there. I was like, oh, this is a terrible, like, notorious movie. And he's like, well, yeah. I'm buying it. I'm like, that's oh, the my. He buy. didn't even know? He didn't know? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Just, God. Mikey, he's gonna my boy. That. You, he's going to make us watch it. You're the Marky Desaad of movies. I swear to God. <laughs> he's going to. God, it's probably my fault, too. I probably should have never mentioned that. Because <laughs> you didn't know either, did you? I've never seen it. I don't know anything about it. Okay. Okay, I remember mentioning it, and I couldn't remember. But I, anyway. I don't know. When, yeah, that's terrible. <laughs> that's a movie that's you not can make us awful. watch that if you want. Yeah, yeah you can. Yeah. We're, uh, our price is very cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have to join our old Patreon myself, because apparently Randy's never seen a human centipede, and I found that uh, I shocking. I've seen a bit of them, like, like bits of, of one. Okay. I don't know which one, but and I am... That's- loosely familiar with the general plot of each as i i have uh, been exposed to the plots yeah, yeah. which t- is about a five minute conversation so you know 
Yay. Do it. So you can <laughs> so do it. So if you want to make us watch Human Centipede. <laughs> you want to f- like Whatever. make the mo- least compelling episode of podcast history. We can do that. Start the new year off right. Human yep. Centipede style. Ass to mouth. God. The only way. The only way. <laughs> My New Year's resolution is to not watch that if possible. <laughs> we'll, we'll be eating your shit. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, God. Let's move on. Yeah, let's let's go ahead and get into what we've been watching this week. Hey, Randy, what you been watching? What you been watching? I've watched a lot this week, actually. Um, usually while I've been like working and having it run in the background, I watched Breaking Bad to completion. So I have completed it for probably the fifth time or something. Wow. Well, as always, great. Uh, I rewatched some of Mortal Kombat before falling asleep. Um, <laughs> the, first, nice. like, the, the first, the first one, one, yes. And like, <laughs> I forgot a few of the dumb things in that movie. Raiden is. He's he's the whitest dude in history. It's amazing. <laughs> like I like he, I don't know what's dude, going on there. Annihilation is somehow worse. Oh, it's so much worse. That is very true. This movie at least <laughs> has some like cool effects and stuff for the time, and is at least uh, like I don't, I don't know. I don't need to go into Mortal Kombat too long. Um, but the most interesting thing I think that I watched this week was Lupin the Third, The Castle of Cogliostro. Are you guys familiar with that? It's no. uh, it's an anime seventies anime that I have like I'm a I'm not a big anime guy at all, but I watched Cowboy Bebop when growing up, and hyper obsessed with it, and I've always had people or the internet tell me that Lupin the Third is sort of in that same realm of uh of storytelling, and it's an anime as well. So I saw it that this movie version of Lupin the Third was on Netflix, so I streamed it, and it's pretty fucking good, like. It's uh, got some really quality fucking animation going on. And it's like the story is, I mean, it's it's a little childlike in some ways, but it, at the same time, it's it's not bad. Like, And I, I watched it, um, I didn't watch it dubbed. The dubbing was pretty bad right away. So I kind of swatched swapped over, at least for me it was. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend it, actually. I think it's pretty fucking good. I'm not big, like I said, I'm not big on anime, but it hit, it hit my pleasure bone, so... Cool. That's it. Interesting. <laughs> so Jews? it's from the seventies. Yeah, I believe that's what it said. Late, like late seventies. Wow. Huh. And uh, I, I and I'm pretty sure. I don't know. I could be totally fucking this up, but I think that it's. I'm pretty sure it was a show. Um, and I don't know what came first or whatever. But this movie, like, it appears to be an extension of a show. Um, and it's got some cool characters. Oh, we also watched Les Miserables, but we don't have to go into that if you don't want. I uh, fucking love Les Hugh Jackman. Huge Yakman. Yeah. Huge it's fucking Jackman. great. That, that Dude, really? Singing, it's really great. I love the music <laughs> in that, and the performances are so good. I don't know, I, I'm man. not a big musical guy. <laughs> Me either. Uh, usually, but like, and when I am, it's usually like goofy stuff. It's Little Shop and things like that, which I love. But for this, I don't know why. It totally gets my, gets my shit going. I get drama nerded out hard about it. Huh. But, I like it. Well, my experience with that movie is I went in like I think it was like a Christmas movie, maybe like the day after Christmas or something, um, like when it came out. And I had no idea that it was legit, like all singing. Yeah, (laughs) I like that about it, though. And I guess that kind of threw me for a loop because it's so long, too. So I was like, are you Mm -hmm. fucking kidding me? Still oh. shorter than Suspiria 2018. Oh, it's fucking my great though. God. Both both of those movies are, and uh, I would say like, I don't know the the fact that they sing the whole time. I actually find that kind of intriguing, and like I thought the way... Gladiator wasn't too hot on his singing. Oh yeah, he was. Russell Crowe is definitely the weakest link on that. <laughs> and it's kind of almost to the point where it's amusing. It's amusing more than yeah, his parts are amusing. I like, hmm. So I, I kind of enjoy it on a different level for him. But fucking Anne Hathaway brings yeah. my ass to tears. That shit is fucking sad and well acted, well sung, too. She did that in one fucking take. She won an Oscar in three and a half minutes. Damn. It's fucking ridiculous. Oh. So yeah, oh, I watched man. that, too. Oh, Catwoman. One take, Jake. Juice, yeah. tell us about musicals you've been watching. 
Um, actually, I've been going back and watching some uh, True Detective, the first season. Oh, man. That show is so, so good. And speaking of musicals, I was saying in the Slack channel, like that opening is like the best television opening I, I've ever seen. I think. Like it's the just title like, sequence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the opening credits or whatever. It's so good. <laughs> Better than Dexter? Uh, yeah. Dexter's pretty great. I like Dexter but, a lot, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I really like that one. It's like edited really well in that song. I fucking fits the just the area perfect. Um but yeah, so that show is great. Um I and I didn't even realize when I started watching it that there's a third one coming out that I guess they really like started like yeah. taking their time with cuz that second one was really bad. So bad I couldn't finish it, which I'm I'm not a guy to just like quit things usually, but I got like four episodes in and just like couldn't finish that second season. I never watched it because of its reputation, but yeah, maybe one day. Like when it dropped, I was like sticking with it, like okay, I'm gonna watch it every week, and I just like couldn't, I just couldn't <laughs> do it. It was that bad. I don't even remember why it was that bad, but it was. Um, and then I've been watching, you know, getting and in the Christmas spirit, of course, I watched. Oh, I watched Santa Claus, man, and the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Oh, Santa Claus, man! I thought it was some some Japanese <laughs> import that I was not familiar with. No, uh, the Santa Claus, and I think that movie actually surprisingly gets worse every year I watch it, like every time. <laughs> and I really do think that's one of those products of like being a child during the time. Like we talk about the '90s, and like, is this movie really like good or bad or whatever? That one, as I'm getting older, I'm like, this movie is such a 90s movie. And within the first, like, 15 minutes, they totally use, like, all the big songs from Home Alone. Like, the iconic, like, songs. Do they? I don't remember that. But just within the 15 minutes, it's, like, really trying to set in, like, I don't know. Because, you know, uh, Home Alone was, what, like, 91, 92 or something? And Santa Claus, I think, is like 97, 98. But like within the first 15 minutes, they use like the iconic ones, that dark carol of the bells, the the deep I'm dreaming of a white Christmas that. that Kevin sings. Or it's so that. weird that they use like those specific ones, too. And it's almost like in your face. And oh I don't God. know. <laughs> that movie is not is not so good. That's actually. like um the one thing. <laughs> one of my only complaints with Reanimator, which I love. I love the Reanimator. Is that they reuse the Psycho theme song, just throwing in a little synth, and I don't know that that always grates me because it's so Psycho. <laughs> like that's yeah, it's like so iconic to me anyway. <laughs> to use it on any other movie just feels fucked without without winking to it. At least it seems really yeah. fucked up to me. Yeah. yeah, leave Home Alone alone. It's already got a fucking Trump <laughs> effect in there. You don't need anything else. Oh yeah, uh, that was, <laughs> uh, yeah. Home Alone too. Oh, it makes me sad. I gotta like fast forward. <laughs> yeah. But also another thing, I never grew up with, or like I don't think watched in its entirety. I feel like I've seen pieces of it, but the Polar Express, uh, which oh, yeah. I feel like people, I and I didn't like it. I feel like people maybe hold it in high regards, or maybe that's just my impression of what people think of it. No, no, no. That is a divisive fucking movie. I think most people hate that fucking movie and make fun okay. of it because it uses that like hyper realistic CGI Ugh, that trips people out. Like a lot of people hate that. And to like me, it doesn't. I actually am one of the few people that I know that actually do kind of like that movie and it doesn't bother me in that way. So, the, like. Tom Hanks voicing like every character was surprising to me because he's not a great voice actor. Like the the none of the people were distinct enough to where I was like, that's not Tom Hanks. They all just sound like Tom Hanks with the slightly or like growlier voice. Or like he just like There's only three characters, I think. Oh really? I don't know. It's like it seemed like everybody I was watching like popped up. I was like, oh, that's Tom Hanks. Just he's like the conductor. His voice. He's the little kid, and he's Santa Claus. I know that. Uh, he's like the ghost too, or there's like a ghost on the train, and I don't know. I didn't yeah, like I it. I didn't like. It. I thought it was not a very good movie, and so now I've hit this like rough patch of Christmas movies. So I need to get into the good ones, and probably should switch over to like the. Adult I have four ones, so. important words for you: Silent Night, Deadly Night. Well, sure, that's Hard. coming up. Well, I also I've gotta hit up. This week. <laughs> I gotta hit up the uh, Bad Santa is on the list. 
the Die Hard, of course, is on the list. Get into the good ones. Christmas the ones that vacation. I know. You got to get on the vacation. warm side of the door. That's sure, what you got to sure. do. You, don't, you, need, you can't be on the cold. You got to be on the warm side of the door. Okay? It's time to leave it's all this important. kitty shit behind. You know, it's time to, time to step a, it up. It's always <laughs> Christmas on the warm side of the door. Always. Oh, my God. Always. Um, anything else, Juice? No, nah, that's it. Cool. I've been watching some stuff and some things. So I watched uh, Critters for the first time, which was cool. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I got that Critters box set from Screen Factory. I've only watched the first one so far, but it, it's like a fun Gremlins knockoff, basically. The creature effects are, are pretty solid. There's there's some fun gore. It's just, it was, I don't know, it was a fun movie. There's like these crazy, weird alien bounty hunters that come down to earth and they're trying to wrangle the critters back up and they like walk into this church this is like this weird funny church scene i don't know. yeah it's a uh, it's like a it's a good popcorn flick so far so good i the always liked one, that movie growing up I'd, I'd never seen it man yeah i don't know i don't, I don't think i've ever seen it, it either really it was on sci-fi channel 100 percent of every single day of the year for a while <laughs> damn so <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. It might be one of those movies, you know, like you said, are on all the time. And if I saw, I might be like, "Oh shit, yeah, this movie." But off the top yeah. of my head, I don't think so. Yeah, they're like little round fluffy gremlins. They're like ghoulies, but less trashy. They're not. No toilets are related. Yeah, they're not climbing out of toilets. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was trying to give the robot sign. It's this. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you gotta look terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Beep. Ah. Uh. <laughs> um i watched another movie called the lodgers which Don't is me. like kind of reminded me of the others a little bit it's like a, a slow moving gothic horror type movie with like a brother and sister in this giant mansion that's sort of crumbling around them and there's some creepy stuff going on in the basement and you're not really sure about it and their parents died mysteriously long ago and there's like um ghosties you know walking around oh. and stuff uh, it's pretty cool. There's like some really nice visuals going on, some some cool stuff to look at. Um, you just kind of have to be in the mood to sit with it for a minute as it as it plots along. Um, I watched this crazy fucking movie that I I really kind of want to highlight um, for a minute here. It's called this movie's called Director's Cut. It's called Bum Fights. It's called... <laughs> oh my god, that's a throwback. You guys ever watch Bum Fights? Is this movie yeah. called Director's Cut? It's written and stars Penn Gillette from Penn and Teller. What? Yeah, that's uh, that's a no sell for me. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that's Randy shutting it down. So oh. it's it's like a it's a horror comedy movie, and it's so I've never seen anything like this before. It, it's the premise of it is there's this movie that was crowdfunded and Penn Jillette's character in the movie was like one of the top tier funders. He put a lot of money towards making this movie and they made it and it's finished, but it was kind of, it was, or it's almost finished and it wasn't going the way he wanted it to go. And he's kind of like obsessed with and mildly stalking the star of the movie. So he, he makes his own, director's cut of the movie he takes all the footage and he starts like filming his own footage with this little handy cam as he's stalking the star in real life and he's splicing that footage into the actual footage of the movie and it gets like creepier and creepier as it goes it's like really funny like it was cracking me up as it went but it does get it starts to get kind of like dark and like really Wait, he really, really does like stalker or it's like part of the movie yeah. like oh no. it's real but it's not real it's it's like as far as the movie is concerned, he is legitimately stalking her in real life. But the footage that he's filming, he's splicing into the footage that they're yeah. making. Okay, so he's making his own movie out of both these things. It's it's a crazy. It's it sounds, what is this thing called? It's called director's cut. It's a crazy like meta kind of thing. But he also like commentates throughout the whole movie. Because it's like a director's commentary is happening, basically. So he kind of helps it all make sense because it is such a strange concept. It's I highly recommend watching it. I really do. Wow. It, you've never seen anything like it before. 
Whether you I mean, like Pendulette or not, I kind of don't. I didn't have an opinion of him. I thought he did a really great job with this because he's fucking weird as shit, and he's also massive. He's a huge dude. I didn't realize how yeah, he's he a big guy. Um, check it out, director's cut. Hard. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't necessarily. I don't necessarily hate Pendulette. I don't though. The, the the thing that gives me pause is that I am aware. I I, I don't know if you guys know about this. But it's like a big thing with certain internet nerds and um there's they created a cd-rom game like i'm just wary of any media they put out that's not their shows because they put out the cd-rom like years ago where it was like truck driving simulator or something like that and it's literally like that sounds awful it says you have to drive from san francisco to chicago or something this in is back in the time. early days back when people and uh, no really that's what they fucking did you have to drive in like 20 hours or some shit. That's terrible. And it's like shitty, like pre, like pre nineties graphics, like, or not pre nineties, but like nineties, early nineties graphics. Like it's terrible. And it's like, why would you make people pay for that? There, it's just, it gives me, it gives me a lot of pause with, with dealing with Pendulette's taste and what he creates for the world outside of the, the shows that I do, which are fine. But. This movie is only 82 minutes long, Randy. You got it. That might be too long. You got it. it oh, man. <laughs> yeah, that might not, be too long. It's not eight hours of him, like, refreshing Patreon or some shit. Like... No, 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 no. <laughs> not, not at all. It, it moves yeah, a lot. There's, touch. like, there's a lot coming at you throughout this whole movie. And it's, like, I don't know. It's For the spectacle alone, it's worth it. Because I, I don't know anything else like this. I don't, it's super cool. I, it was refreshing. Hard recommend from Bob. Brandy's not buying right. it. That's fine. Somebody watch this movie and talk to me about it. I don't know if anybody else has seen it. <laughs> You're a lonely man. <laughs> it's good. Lynn Shay- your principles, Rob. <laughs> Yet again. Lynn Shay's in it. Yeah, yeah, Lynn Shay's it's in like, it. How much? Oh, oh it's Gilbert Gottfried. Yeah, man, he's got a, sm- a combo. He's, he's in it for yeah. like two minutes, maybe. Like he's got a uh, uh, super okay. small part. I want to. Yeah. I want to see the movie where Gilbert Gottfried's running around with Lynn Shay. Can he be in the next Insidious? <laughs> Dude, have you watched that Netflix show called Bumping Mics? Uh, with Jeff it's, Ross and uh, J- David Tell? Dave, David Tell, yeah. The, I no, I have the not. Second, the second episode of it, Gilbert Gottfried comes up and does like a few jokes with him. That dude's like super gross. <laughs> like really gross. Dude, I watched him live on this fucking like comedy cruise that i went on and apparently i he just has his jokes and he will just not he will just railroad through fucking anything he doesn't care if people are yelling at him he doesn't care about shit some lady yelled out we love you gilbert and he's like okay and then he just keeps going and he's just zooming through like he's reading out of a shit like a crazy ass fucking fucked up joke book saying the most fucked up things you can imagine it's it's awe-inspiring truly yeah, Gilbert, he was talking Gilbert about b- banging dead grandmas and stuff a lot. It was crazy. That sounds a about lot. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been on my mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. shit. Let's talk about the main feature and uh, get into the back of the box. Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter. All righty then. The uh, plot synopsis is as follows. After being mortally wounded and taken to the morgue, murderer Jason Voorhees spontaneously revives and embarks on a killing spree as he makes his way back to his home at Camp Crystal Lake. It's got a death curse! I had forgotten that's how this movie starts. (laughs) Yeah. I I, I just watched this like less than 12 hours ago, I think. (laughs) So... (laughs) Just, just to be clear. <laughs> I love the beginning of this movie, actually. Well, well, we'll get into all that. Anyways, like we always do, real quick, have you guys seen this movie before? First impressions, yada, yada. Would you recommend people check it out? Randy, why don't you kick us off? I have seen this before, and I will say that if you like Friday the 13th, you will enjoy the final chapter on some level. On some, on some kind cool. of... Cool! Yep. It's a hard recommend for a very specific person. Uh, no, I, I th- it's, a, it's a decent entry into the series. I think it's definitely one of the top ones for me. Um, I, I just, like, 
it's just a goofy fucking movie. So you got you got to know what you're in for. It's a goofy movie. I agree. Yeah, uh, Juice. How about you? The thing about this movie is, I was trying for almost the entirety of this film to remind myself, like, have I actually seen this one or not? And I'm still not quite sure. That's if not I, great. That's not if great. I had seen it before, I think I'm confusing it, or I think I'm like mixing in a lot with six. I think yeah. I'm like meshing those up together. So. I'm still not sure if I had previously seen this one before or not. But like Randy said, I, if you enjoy the series, yeah, the series in general, then this one is not one to disappoint. Um, to me, I don't think there's any like specific, like iconic thing that makes this like a necessary viewing for you know Friday the Thirteenth in general. But it's it's um it's a good enough time. It's it's not bad. If if you like boobies, then um you should enjoy this film to some extent. Accurate. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this movie several times before. It's I love the Friday the Thirteenth franchise because it's just it's sort of like you know horror meat and potatoes. It's mindless slasher, good time, fun, and there's a lot of humor in them. In most of them, anyways. Um, especially this one. I don't know. This is one of my favorites for sure. Um, hard recommend. You know, if you like slasher movies, you can't go wrong. Is this particular one kind of like uh, almost perfectly encapsulates like everything you would want from a Friday the Thirteenth movie? Like they kind of really distill the bullshit down, and you get it pure, delivered pure yeah, into your veins. Guess, in this yeah, one. I guess that's true. It's yeah. a straight shot. Yeah, I don't, it, it's it's kind of exactly what you would think of when you think Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, I don't know, it's a lot of fun. It, was, uh, it kept me laughing. So, I, know, I don't know. I like watching it. I don't really get tired of it. Hard recommend from the Bob yet again. There we go. Let's drop the spoiler warning. All right, fellas. Let's get into the nitty gritty. So, like, the you know, the Friday the 13th franchise, they always start the movie by recapping all the other movies. So, like, the first 20 <laughs> minutes is just recycled footage, basically. It's not it's that a, long. No, it's, it's, it's not it's that not, long. It's, not. it's like, it's it really, minutes. it's like maybe five minutes, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you get the whole, it's a death curse. It's, you're going to Camp Blood, ain't you? <laughs> camp Blood. You and can't kids, have a Friday movie without a Camp Blood camp cooter. Blood, ain't you? You got all the kids sitting around a campfire talking about spookiness. And then uh, you get the title card, which I kind of love, you know, Friday the 13th. And then yeah. from behind, it the explodes. final it explodes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the final that really final does set shatter. the tone. You're like, this movie, you know what you're getting into with that yeah. explosion. And it's just like white lettering, too. There's nothing too fancy about it. It's stock. Stock explosion. <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> they well, didn't put a whole lot of time wholesale. into it, but it, but it really lets you know what's going on. True. And then we kind of the movie actually like starts at the old like cabin or whatever from uh, part three, where all the kids die, and it's like Jason allegedly dies, and so an ambulance like rolls up and it's just picking up all the carcasses basically that are left on the ground from part three. And they uh, they take all the bodies back to the morgue, <laughs> and of course, like everybody that works in this hospital is a total fucking shitbag. Apparently, it's <laughs> they've got Jason on a gurney, and of course, the dude who's like taking him in, the Undertaker or whatever, he's eating a sandwich and he's like sets it on Jason's dead They're body. They're always eating a sandwich. Why is that a thing? Why is that I'm gonna thing? make a fucking horror movie with a guy in the fucking mortuary just straight up having a, a full Thanksgiving dinner on a dead person's <laughs> chest. That's it's the next logical sauce. step. D didn't they do that too? Wasn't that in uh, uh Halloween? Haunted House? Hill House? Hill Haunted House? The thing we just watched. <laughs> Haunting of Hill House. <laughs> Hill House. I don't think they too did. many damn H's. I yeah. thought maybe she was eating at one point. I know, like, Bordello of Blood, you got that yeah. Cooter guy. He's eating, I'm pretty sure, when he's cutting Ooh. up dead bodies. So this, yeah. this guy, his name is Axel in the movie. Yeah. He's, he's probably he's probably tied for my Cooter pick. It might be a little too soon to yeah. get into this. But So this dude, like, you see him, he's eating a sandwich. 
And then he talks about like this old dead lady that's it's off screen. It's, and he's like, oh, she's still looking pretty good. You know, actually, it might it might go over there. I'm getting a little lonely. He's talking about yeah. banging this court. That was and weird. then, you know, you do what later, you later, he's he's watching this aerobics video and then he tries <laughs> to, to bang a nurse and then they they almost bang. And then she gets kind of creeped out because Jason's hand like falls on her or whatever. So she goes away. And then he goes back to the aerobics video and he's totally about to jerk it to the fucking aerobics video with all these corpses around him. And then Jason finally kills him. But it's like this this dude's talking about banging dead grannies, whacking it to aerobics videos. It that fucking... aerobics video was cracking me. <laughs> you guys want to know some early trivia about the uh aerobics sure. video sure yeah because yeah. that this I mean, is that from... inclusion that that type of humor like really makes this movie kind of shine i guess or like bob was saying like the the fun of it you know the kind of goofy campiness of it just those kind of details really help you enjoy this kind of movie yeah, oh okay. yeah it's all about the details with this movie <laughs> well, it's, it's very subtle this one no, um, so here's the trivia. Uh, the workout video Axel watches is called Aerobicize 1982, and it stars Darcy DeMoss, who went on to have a role in Friday the 13th Part 6. So nice. she's actually in the fucking series as, a, as a, an actress and cool. as the source of masturbation for a man uh, who watches her aerobics. So there you go. <laughs> trivia. It was Success. cracking me up because the video, like, I guess it's a real video then, like you were bringing yeah. it up, but it's it so ridiculous. Like, it. like <laughs> there's at one point, there's three women, I think, unless it's just they cut and edited the same woman. Uh, but they like all, there's three of them and they all got their like asses together and they're just <laughs> shaking it. They're just torquing their asses. That <laughs> is a robicizing, man. <laughs> Come on. It's cracking me up. I love how oh, the whole time Axel's just wearing like a white V-neck tee and then a lab coat over it. <laughs> <laughs> he looks like such a shit bag. Dude, they ran oh, out of fucking costumes for this movie. That's all I can assume. <laughs> I love it. His his desk. He brought is... that from his like his cousin works at, at, as a as an orthodontist or something. He just borrowed that shit. <laughs> Guaranteed. I gotta pretend to be a doctor, man. Can I borrow your coat? <laughs> I lost the costume, man. I need your coat now. <laughs> yeah, I completely forgot. That's how this movie opens. Because then it's it just totally jumps away from the hospital. It's not like he stalks yeah, the hospital. Or he just I leaves, guess you get yeah. a little bit of him wandering back. But it's just, I guess, the, the <laughs> wilderness. There's no... Yeah. Like, so he kills, he kills Axel and the nurse. And then that's it for the hospital. But it, the way that Axel dies is pretty sweet. He like sla he slashes his neck and then just totally turns his head completely around. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and then he kills the nurse with this scalpel, right, in the supply room. Yeah, he like cuts cuts her down the middle. Oh, down the middle. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then that's yeah, the good there's, way. There's and then I guess it kind of jumps Terrifier to the, way. the family. Terrifier <laughs> jumps to the family with a uh, little baby Tommy Jarvis running around playing video games, wearing an alien mask for some reason, some fucking reason. Yeah, he's they just needed to make Tom Savini a child for this role, apparently. <laughs> like, this is uh, just purely just a way for them to like sneak in a few extra like prosthetic scares that don't have any bearing on anything. I guess yeah. they kind of. I don't even think they used it as a scare at any point, did they? I don't think so. No, he doesn't. He, doesn't he jump out at one point? Ma maybe once, but yeah, it really, it's... it's just at the beginning where he's wearing a mask, and then at one point think... he takes the random hunter guy up into his room and just shows him all the stuff. He's like, "Hey, look at all my cool shit," and they just like highlight it all, and that's about it. Yeah. I think that, that it's supposed to uh, later on play in when Tommy Jarvis uh, is pretending to be baby Jason Voorhees at the end. I think yeah. that he's supposed to have prosthetic himself, but 
he just had to like shave his head and put on like yeah. a little bit of makeup. Or yeah, something. I don't think they needed to. <laughs> like, I guess kudos to them for going the extra mile, but that extra mile was a little superfluous, maybe. <laughs> something that I never noticed before is when Tommy Jarvis is first introduced in this movie, his mom looks at him like he takes the mask off. And his mom looks at him. She's like, you know, you really need to get a haircut. And I was like, oh shit. Oh. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh yeah, she tells him before he takes the mask off. That's right. Mm. I never noticed that before. Also, like fucking Tommy Jarvis is the only, besides his mom, is the only like actual adult in this entire movie. This kid is a fucking badass. He yeah. he well, handles business consistently throughout this movie. Well, he's the only person that's a person as well. <laughs> he's the yeah. like the that's, whole like oh I do prosthetics, but also he like fixes things. Like anytime like the car breaks, like the sister depends on him. Like he's he's like technical too, I guess. The he goes down and look <laughs> at like the fuses when the power goes out and shit like that. But literally, he's like the only one who has any personable details. <laughs> and, like nobody else. What like what can you say about the yeah. sister? What the what is or the yeah. hunter? I the hunter, I guess. Look, except I don't know his name. <laughs> his name it's important Rob. that we acknowledge yeah. that this movie hangs on two different people, and neither of them are Jason Voorhees. Uh, the two people <laughs> being Corey Feldman, and the other being Crispin fucking Glover. Fucking um, Glover. Crispin Crispin. Hellion Glover as his full name. Um, yeah, uh, I think that like to me, this movie is kind of like made up of beats in between those two fucking characters. Honestly. I love watching Crispin Glover do his shit in this movie. It is a riot to me. Let me look. Let me look at my notes. I was telling Bob as I was watching this movie, I was like, a lot of my notes just end in LOL. <laughs> <laughs> Most of mine do too. I, it's not something that I usually do when I'm like jotting stuff down, but I was yeah. cracking, cracking up a lot. <laughs> also, I don't know anyone's name, so it's pretty much going to be like Jorts, the guy wearing Jorts. Or... <laughs> I, think, I think I know most of them. Those Teddy. are the smallest Jorts I have ever dude, seen. Dude, that dude's Jorts. Skin tight. <laughs> Fucking skin oh, tight. Oh, man. It's, you need to see much, the entire mound of penis. It's pretty much like sugar boobs one, sugar boobs two, <laughs> sugar boobs three. I mean, these women are not distinct. They're completely interchangeable. They have no type of personality. And I'm going to put it out I there. I think two of them are kind of twins, maybe, I guess. Oh, they're two were absolutely twins. Okay. Yeah. They, like, they one was the, supposed to be confuse hotter, things though. a little more. Well, Teddy was like, oh, you've got the hotter one. Or no, it was... Uh, it was uh, What's this? A Crispin. He was like, "You got the hotter one, or whatever." I was like, "Wait, aren't, aren't they twins?" But I, I don't I know. Never like. I don't think hey, there's yeah, another yeah. entry in the series that is hornier than this one. Like this <laughs> movie is horny. Not the it's characters. The whole six, movie. Yeah, it's just six teens, and then everyone goes off to bang. The only one who does not go off to bang is just chilling, watching this old school porn so i mean that's most well, the most desiring of banging one also. of the twins doesn't bang she tries to leave because she's not oh, yeah, right. and then she gets killed and then yeah nobody wants to bang teddy because he's a shit bag so he just like watches yeah. porn and it's super weird but there's so when the kids like the the car of teens i guess not kids they're like driving up there's this like weird through line so, so teddy and crispin glover are in the back of the car talking about how Crispin Glover is like having lady trouble or whatever. And Teddy's like, oh, it's because you're a dead fuck. And then they, they reference that shit throughout the rest of the fucking movie. He keeps yeah, calling he him a dead that. fuck. And he's like, Crispin's like super uh, like conscious about it, I guess. And when he finally gets laid, he like rubs it in Teddy's face because he doesn't get laid. It's like, I don't know that you can really call that a character arc. It's just fucking weird. That, is, fucking that is just weird. a sequence of events. <laughs> that is pure that there, yeah there's nothing to that i love i love fucking chris but in this though he's so so bizarre and every choice that he makes oh my god the, the dance is the chief among them can i so, can i read oh Sorry, go my god the dance <laughs> that you dance i just my that? note I, my yeah. note says that dude dancing, laugh out loud, <laughs> fucking white dude. <laughs> <laughs> fucking that shit, white dude. That is, there's a reason that is an iconic moment from the scene that everybody can reference, but you can't reference the kills offhand. It's because that scene is 
basically more impactful than murder. Um, <laughs> so here's a piece of trivia about Crispin's dance. The strange dance, which Jimbo, Crispin Glover's name is Jimbo, apparently. I could not. Um, I didn't know that. Hilarious, <laughs> also. Um, Jimbo performs at the party was contributed by actor Crispin Glover and was based on the eccentric way he actually danced in clubs. <laughs> on the set, he was dancing to Back in Black by ACDC as a scene was filmed. In the film, the edited version of Love is a Li- it's the edited version of Love is a Lie by Lion was that was dubbed into the scene. That's not that important. The important thing to remember is that Crispin Glover would go to nightclubs and dance this way. This was not I mean, I don't know how much of a fucking actual artistic choice this was, so much as it was this is how I dance. This is this is what you get. You hired me <laughs> and here I am. That's a weird dude. Like legitimately a strange <laughs> person in your life. Yeah. Do you know about his alter ego? No, I don't. <laughs> oh. Dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, so Chris McGlover is famous for going on the David Letterman show wearing these goofy fucking, like, glasses and, like, an insane, I don't know, very uh, awesome. 90s haircut. T-shirt. And he and he was basically in character and went out that way multiple times as a character called Ruben. And, it like, Andy Kaufman style, still to this day, does not acknowledge it. And he's like... He almost kicked David Letterman in the face, and David Letterman walked off his own set. Like that Damn. shit's insane. Yeah, David, like, like Crispin Glover is a weird fucking guy, and he made a couple of movies that are like extremely experimental in all the ways that you think experimental movies are shit. That's the kind of thing you're talking about here. Didn't he make like, one that stars people with autism or something? Like the whole cast. I don't know. Maybe, but I don't know it. But he's made a few, and they're all very like. Con- like conceptual to the point where it's inscrutable entirely by n- normal people, and that's almost the point. That's it's like okay, but do I enjoy it? You can't <laughs> like, I don't know. That's a whole, the whole thing. And I, I, to some respect, I in some respect, I t- totally respect his moves, his dance all the way down to his fucking Whoa. kicking David Letterman in the face. I like but, your moves, guy. Like your moves, Crispin. I like your moves. <laughs> Guy. I like your moves, Ruben. He they ended up making a movie with that character in it like years after he introduced it on, in public. But he it said that he's like Ruben plays himself in the credits and shit. Like it's fucking crazy. So that's my Crispin Gloveness Glover segment. Gloveness. Thanks, man. Crispin Gloveness. <laughs> Gloveness. <laughs> There's so as we're getting to, as Jason is like approaching Camp Crystal Lake, there's this weird, kind of unnecessary scene with a hitchhiker eating a banana. A banana. She's oh my like, god! That is yeah, that poor that chick. She's just that is the most sympathetic character in all movie history to me because she is purely in, like created in order to make you hate her, but it's so much <laughs> that it makes you feel so bad for her. It's the most sympathetic human being on the planet to me. So it she's did trying crack to hitchhike. She's eating a banana, a little sloppy, but <laughs> she's going fucking hard on that banana, dude. But then, she's... like, as she gets her throat slit, her mouth is wide open, and it's just like a half-eaten banana hanging banana out everywhere. Because yeah. she pretty, gets stabbed like girl. through the neck, right to the back. Yeah, of the yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. I don't fucking get it. Like that scene makes me it bums me out in a way that <laughs> few movies can in the realm of Friday the Thirteenth. It's like in the whole series, there's nobody who's more designed to be hated for the most superficial and terrible reasons in the world. So I'm just like, God, she just wants to fucking eat a banana and get to Canada. Leave her alone. <laughs> this fucking lady alone. They, the original <laughs> casting was for like she's billed as hitchhiker in the credits. She was originally cast for fat girl. So uh... like this is like mid 80s, like complete like uh aesthetic only judgment at its worst it's like yeah, okay let's find some fat with... make her just slam a banana and then we'll stab her in the <laughs> fucking head for no reason especially because the rest of the chicks like i said it's all just sugar tits so yeah. it's not <laughs> yeah, the, the, like the women in this movie are characterized by either a horniness or b <laughs> sloppy fat disgusting <laughs> those are the two character podcast. traits of Hashtag women in this feminism yeah, that's pretty <laughs> fucked up. And, you know, not to say that the boys have it much better, but Jesus, that hitchhiker really bums me out. 
Dude, we should make like a um a cereal. We should have a straight show. when we we get a little bigger. We're going to cons and whatnot. Oh, we're gonna yeah. have our our cereal like they do. You know how they have those weird cereals at cons? I don't know why that's like a thing, but um we're gonna what we're gonna have this. Talking sh- about? We're, yeah. I don't. There's always like these distinct cereals at cons. Like there's always Did some booth that has these. Ser- no, I will send you pictures. I have pictures of cons where there's just like I caught like a Marvel cereal. I don't know. It's just like you know like there's whatever anyways we're gonna have our own cereal and it's gonna be like straight chilling and we need to have like some marshmallow yabos like that's our thing we're gonna have like the yabos at the marshmallow i don't know if i want to be with titty cereal juice it's floating in milk too jesus christ that's a that's that's a little chicken and egg for me i don't know Oh man, I don't know. We'll have to rethink that one. I, I have no idea what you're talking about, by the way. I, I, I believe you, but this is fucking news to me. <laughs> I don't know. There's always like some booth. It's got these like distinct cereals, and it's really just like the repackaged like cheap fruity pebbles or cheap like cocoa puffs, but they're in like these custom design boxes to you're match thinking the con like or chocolate, whatever. Like repackaging chocolate Cheerios as. Yabos or something like. Well, no, but they have to have the the yabos have to be the mar like Lucky Charm style marshmallows. So it's like the it's like the extra. <laughs> Man, what a time! To go live. I can't. That's like I, you're gonna corner the market at Spencer's. That's all I can tell you. Yeah, I want to go ahead and say that that's trademarks just because I'm saying it. I don't. That's I get it. like a verbal Damn. trademark on that. That's how that works. <laughs> That's the marshmallow it. yabos. I want. I that. declare <laughs> trademark on this idea. <laughs> yeah. On this here day, <laughs> yabos cereal is mine. God damn. Uh, so these teens. What the fuck bang. are we even talking about? These teens want to bang, right? Yeah, We're talking so, about banana girl. Um, yeah. So the the, yeah. the twins are introduced next, I think, and they're just like riding bikes, and then just roll up on a bike. Everybody just goes skinny dipping immediately. Yeah, it's not that one <laughs> chick who gets pulled in by a naked chick. Oh, yeah. That's right. But yeah, that's sort everybody of like a else. fake out scare. Yeah. Everybody, okay. yeah, they just go skinny dipping. And there's not a lot of tension in this movie. Like you were saying, like, it's a fake scare. That might have been, like, the biggest tension. Like, oh, is she drowning? Is she get pulled under? Like, n- like yeah. all of Jason's kills, like, happen kind of like, you know, like that. Real like, quick. it's just like, yeah. oh, you're dead. You're dead. Um, some of them are cool. Like old Jorts, he gets like harpooned through the dong. He's swimming. Yeah. He goes to find his girlfriend who has been slain in a raft <laughs> out in the lake. And so he goes swimming out there, finds her dead and trying to get back. And Jason just comes harpooning up through the water. However, that works straight man. through the dong. Old Jorts, man. He gets a bed. <laughs> oh, I mean, he's he's a pretty I mean, he made his target known. Let's be clear. His yeah, dick had to be known. It was like a, it's like a <laughs> homing he beacon. I also done. made a note. This only applies to the people on this cast, but I said, "Old Jorts looks like Nick Leonard." <laughs> <laughs> All right, good well, to know. Uh, that's folks. that's. <laughs> <laughs> what? He that does. is a thing. <laughs> that is a thing we do not need to put into the world. You know, Justin, you really don't have any integrity, do you? Oh, oh god. my god. <laughs> look, look. Yeah, that's what, we're getting too inside baseball on this one. Yeah, that's true. Um so yeah, so yeah, let me see. I'm looking through the notes. What happened to the dog? Did Jason legit just throw the dog out the window? Is that what Dude, happened? So it either jumped out the window to save yeah. itself or it was thrown. But you don't That was know. the thing. I was like, wait a second, did the dog jump? And I was like, Well, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, <laughs> so I was like, Well, then did he throw him? <laughs> And you don't it's see so it hit the ground, so you don't no. know if it even, like, died or if it ran away, or you just see it fly through the window. So yeah, one of my favorite fucking flying. things about this movie is the sheer like quantity of sugar glass. Every window is fucking blasted in half. I fucking love it. People go Not just flying that. through windows constantly. Not just that, but Jason just blasts through like the front door all the time. <laughs> he just fucking does. He's like love, the fucking Kool Aid dude. He's, he's just mega Kramer everywhere. Before he blasts through the front door, he blasts through a window and he he, he grabs somebody. I forget who it was. Yeah. Like throws them out the window, and then he walks it's the around, kid, and blasts right? Through the door. Jar- yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's Jar- 
Maybe it is. Maybe it is. He grabs another chick out of the second story window and throws yeah, her he does. onto the top of the car. Yeah, he does. just throws damage to the ground. And then the so sister, many windows. Yeah. This, this shit blew my fucking mind. So this is like towards the end of the movie, but the sister, she, uh, she's like trying to save her brother. So she runs downstairs and Jason's chasing her and she's like, you know, telling him to get out of the house while she's like distracting Jason. She runs across the street to the other house, runs inside runs upstairs, immediately jumps out the window through yes. the glass, <laughs> onto the ground. She's all fucked up, laying there. You think she might be dead, but then she gets up, and then she runs back into the original house in which Tommy is still there, and she's like, why didn't you fucking leave? Like, she just... Why did she do that specifically? Yeah. Like, they, had, they had to have somebody go through another fucking window. Look, for we paid for this glass. We're going through the glass. Someone's, Someone's going, through going through this fucking glass. Yeah. Dude, when old Hunter, the bear hunter, dies, <laughs> that shit was cracking me up. And when he's like, oh, God, he's killing me. And he's just, like, beating the shit out of him with a wrench. And the whole time, he's he's just like, oh, me. God, oh, God, he's killing me. He's killing me. And that shit was cracking me up. So you want to know some trivia about that shit? Yeah, yeah because sure. it was hilarious. <laughs> so Joseph Zito, who is the uh, uh, director, right? Yeah. I'm double yeah, right. myself. Now. Okay, just making sure some of the names are getting muddled in my head. Zito based Rob's death scene in which he screams, "He's killing me!" as Jason attacks him on a newspaper article he had read about a murder victim in New York City who begged his attacker to stop stabbing him. Zito had intended the sequence to be particularly gut wrenching, as Rob had even had been established as a capable opponent for Jason. Upon viewing screenings of the film, however, Zito realized that the way in which the scene was filmed made Rob seem pathetic and impotent, rather than making Jason appear merciless <laughs> and God often damn. caused audiences to burst out laughing. What the fuck? So. <laughs> There, there's some uh, some really strong pedigrees going into this thing. <laughs> uh, Fucking Rob, got to shit into the stick on this one. <laughs> it's like that it's is troll cracking too, me up. You guys that was a... troll too, right? Yeah, that's been a minute. Oh man, Where he's like, he's eating her. And then they're going to eat me. <laughs> oh my god! It's a, it's just like that to me. Really made him real impotent there. Yeah, <laughs> what a you way really to describe. amp the pressure. It really, it's like a really, uh, really gut wrenching scene. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> that that makes that scene even fucking more hilarious. He really, I mean, to be <laughs> honest with Throughout this entire movie, Rob doesn't do jack shit. Like he's got yeah, a gun I mean, that's I, immediately broken. He doesn't, yeah. he doesn't pose a threat to Jason for a half a second, man. I don't do think shit. so either. Like the he chick, the traps. sister, or whatever, does more. Like yeah. I don't think he ever actually attacks Jason in an no. effective way because when they go down into the basement, they're like, "Oh, we're hunting for him or whatever," and that's the first time he sees him. Yeah, and he's just dead <laughs> and he immediately. Just gets his ass beat. <laughs> he's killing me. <laughs> Which the thing is, at this point, seriously, like, we just saw Jason come back from the dead from the morgue. There's no. There's yeah. no. Yeah. You know, uh, there's, no, yeah. there's no way to defeat him. You just have to take yeah. your, your death, basically. <laughs> oh, God. The way you defeat yeah. Jason in these movies at this point is like, <laughs> all right, what's the best stopgap we have until the next movie? We can chain him underneath the water, or we can trick him into thinking I'm <laughs> I'm his younger self or some shit. Like, I don't know. I don't know. This one was... Yeah. I've because six is where they trap him in the lake, right? Yeah, where they like anchor him or whatever down back yeah, into the I, water. No, or is, or is that, that five? That no, might be five. No, five, or is it the one right before? No, or is it seven? Real Jason Wait, five. man, that's seven. Seven. Manhattan. Oh, Manhattan is yeah. eight, right? Yeah, six opens up where he's God, damn, buried he's and they, they Frankenstein him. He gets electric. Yeah, they electric shock. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so seven. Yeah. So at least like that idea is kind of creative. Here, he just like falls on a knight, his own machete, and then uh, Feldman kind of goes crazy and 
hacks him to pieces, I guess. Oh, and they show his face. He gets his he gets his uh, mask. They show his off. face in most of the movies, actually. Yeah, actually. they show it a lot. Um, so, <laughs> um, that's a pretty cool scene, though. Like the the effects in that where Jason falls on his own machete and his, it just kind of like slides down it. Yeah, I always, yeah. I always thought that was pretty cool. Like, his own. Like, the thing is, of other than kills him. Like Corey Feldman, I guess, trying to like mimic his his way, and then like, oh, he's gonna be the next Jason or whatever bullshit they do with that. I really, there's you were saying like it's one of your favorites, Bob, and I get like it. It is kind of like the iconic, you know, Jason kind of kills or whatever. But there, to me, there was nothing specifically that separated this movie, and that's why I was struggling. Like, have I seen this one? Because I think I was confusing with like six. There's just nothing distinctive to me about this well, one. It was enjoyable. Like I enjoy it. Like it was it like Rob said, it's like the meat and potato. It is what it is. It's what you want out of like a stupid slasher. Um, it's funny and nobody matters and they just get <laughs> brutalized and, and everyone but it's horny. Yeah. Insanely so, horny. It's mm-hmm. just um I don't know. I didn't find anything iconic about it, like uh, that's, yeah, that's a, a staple in the series. That's the game with Friday the Thirteenth, though. It's so homogenized, and especially in that center area, it's like it's so homogenous that you like. I don't know. It, it's like it solidified the rules between this and Nightmare when they were coming out with sequels for both of those. Those are what's really solidified the idea of of these slasher movies in people's heads and what they're supposed to quote unquote be. So, like, I mean. People already had plenty of like good slashers out there and stuff, but these are the ones obviously that they they are, were drawn to for so long, and they kept plumbing the same wells, producing the exact same fucking story, and there was just there's just nowhere for them to go. So they're just like, this is people are coming here based on nothing but spectacle. So let's just fucking give them a fucking spectacle. And that's yeah, what, and that makes me appreciate really Nightmare on Elm Street as a series more yeah. because this doesn't take a whole lot, like. In this type of series, Jason is more of a setting than anything else. Like, oh, you got it's more of like a summary. Like Friday the thirteenth, it's more of oh, you gotta have it by the lake and it's got like this more kind of summary feel. Jason is nothing. <laughs> He's like there's no there's nothing iconic. There's nothing about how he does things. It's just the, the machete. Cla- he obviously the sound. doesn't yeah. talk. It's a classic or head crush too. He always crushes heads. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, true. you know what I'm saying? Like, but at least like a nightmare on Elm Street yeah, yeah, just, yeah. No I guess, is able I to. Lo- yeah, you've got like the dream settings and you've got Freddy is an actual character and has a personality and is distinct. Jason is literally like could be anything. Yeah. He's just I mean, a dude walking all, around. He, I, I think he doesn't really need to be anything else. Though. He just needs to be like this unstoppable machine that murders and sometimes pretty fucking funny ways, like humorous ways. Yeah. It just, after like, like I said, like with this movie for, there was nothing I could just be like, it's a movie where Jason unstoppably kills a bunch of teens near a lake. It could be See, one of it could be one of ten movies. <laughs> it's it's right except yeah. for fucking Manhattan because that shit oh and X. God. Shit's but um, yeah, yeah. Well, but but I think yeah, what you're getting at, yeah, I think what you're like getting. Yeah, and Jason goes to hell too. Fuck that movie forever. I like that movie. <laughs> really? Yeah, no, nope. hard like we that. Should, I, I'm, we should no doubt. I don't think I've ever seen that one. It's oh weird. my god, it's terrible. But um. <laughs> Uh, but the, 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 I think what you're getting at is like what I like. What the reason I like Fry, um, Nightmare better in general is I think what you're touching on, which is that if they're gonna be so homogenous, at least in that movie, they have the freedom to be crazy creative with the yeah. individual kills. So I'm not gonna confuse Dream Warriors with the Dream Child or something because they're while they like draw from the same like character. First of all, yeah, he does have a little bit of a personality that helps, but they can go. Each director, each person, each time they go back to the well, they can go completely wherever they want to with it. If they want to put yeah. like a like a, a a scene that's like fucking Saving Private Ryan on D Day, like that scene in there, they could do it because yeah. the movie has that bandwidth. The the concept has that bandwidth. It can be whatever you imagine. So whatever you can imagine is more distinctive than just this setting, Friday the Thirteenth, just with Jason. It's just more distinctive in general, I think. 
It is more distinctive, but I, for some reason, I much prefer Friday the Thirteenth as far as between those two franchises specifically. Really? Yeah, I don't. I don't. A lot of people do. I I really like the first three nightmares, but after that, man, they all, it's all just like a big smudge of like random shit that I don't really. It it doesn't really interest me much. And as far as like the the setting and the the the, the, the aesthetic, the the feeling of it, I just don't like it. I much prefer the lake setting. I don't know. Yeah, it, I mean, it's I just guess like that's, dumb teens getting killed either way. But that sounds like yeah, a, like I guess that's a what very... Friday the Thirteenth has going for it. I mean, it it does. It's got that setting. It really is, yeah. and it's kind of that iconic thing that has stuck with a generation now of the whole like lake and isolation and summer and kind of general like it's got that mark. You know, I don't know, kind of locked down that feeling that it just kind of built in with the aesthetic. But it's it really is like four, six, seven. I can't distinguish them in my mind. I can't right. be like this is I, that movie. I can this distinguish is that movie. all of the Friday movies, but like I said, after three on Nightmare, it's I can't. It's it's a big blur. Really? I I, yeah. I I don't I don't have that issue with like well with Nightmare. I mean they both blur, but they're I think they're definitely more distinctive in Nightmare. And the only reason that you know. I could be I the I could be wrong as if I've seen Friday more often, which I think might be the case for you, Bob. Um, Probably, yeah. So yeah, maybe definitely. that plays into it as well. Um, but for me, like, yeah, nightmare. I mean, I didn't mean to. I we don't have to necessarily make this yeah. a versus, but no, um, yeah. I I think it's really because they're so homogenous. It's really down to what your personal. What you, what you like. If you don't like the fucking red and green sweater, that's more than enough reason for you to prefer Friday the 13th. Yeah, it might sure. as well. <laughs> Speaking of which, well, like, yeah. there's this one scene in, and to bring it back to this movie a little bit, where, like, Jason gets the TV smashed over his head, and it just made me think of the Welcome to Prime Time, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Nightmare 3. I was yeah. like, oh, shit. Nice. That is one nice. of the better things when those these two movies started, like, I, I don't know. I don't think they referenced. That wasn't a reference. I think this movie came out before. Yeah, January. I think it does. Yeah. But um, I like when these movies started like sort of like like winking at each other a little bit. Fucking. Yeah. That's the only good thing about uh about Jason Goes to Hell. By the way, is the very very end. We still <laughs> spoilers have spoilers covered. Frey vs. Jason. Right. Yeah. The I greatest threatened one. picking it a lot, but now we don't have personal picks anymore. So now I'm gonna have to like throw it into a poll pick or something. <laughs> we can. I mean, we we probably work them in. We probably work some in. We'll see. <laughs> Just coming here. Yeah, yeah. We, cause it's hard to say definitively because we don't know what's coming out, what's gonna be released, what we want to talk about, and all that stuff. But we'll see. We should just do a series of versus movies. <laughs> we could. Good. Yeah. That, Whole month different. of verses. <laughs> I don't know. Something a little different. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. And we'll see. Tell us what you think at www.cootercommittee.org. Dot <laughs> gov. I hope that Dot exists. Buy it. Uh, what else? What else is there to about? say about this fucking yeah. movie? Anything? Yeah, might as well hop in. Yeah. So I mean, Jarvis, no, it Jarvis just... tricks him, and that's it. Yeah, it's final yeah. chapter, and it's just oh, Corey Feldman is. I love that Feldman like so. Uh, as far as we know, like Feldman's character has not heard of, of Jason Voorhees whatsoever until this hunter shows up and kind of t- talks to them a- about this guy. He's like, oh, he's back. He's killing people. And then he sees him and then he finds the little newspaper clippings in the hunter's backpack. And he sees the little like artist rendition of Jason as a kid and just for some reason decides to shave his head and make himself look like that. And because he thinks that that'll stun Jason long enough to kill him. Like it does, doesn't really make much sense at all. At a certain but, point, uh, these movies become like really, really batitted fucking <laughs> Scooby Doo episodes where they just have like a little run around. They, they have, you know, a spooky setting. A guy who scares them is like, oh, you got to look out for this thing. Oh, look out. And then you have them get, like, in this case, murdered. But, and then you have the chase, basically, where you're chasing fucking Scooby Doo around a mansion set to groovy music. And then <laughs> you have an elaborate trap set to trap Jason under the ocean or whatever, the, under the lake or fucking uh, make him think that he, yeah, you know, all it's just schemes. The schemes are what are Jason's fucking like weakness. People, if you scheme hard enough, you can get him to do anything. 
That's what Freddy takes advantage of in Freddy vs. Jason. I mean, it's kind of the same thing with like Nightmare 2. It's like, how are we going to trick Freddy this time? Or we inject ourselves with these Yeah, things. I mean, I I'm not, it, yeah. that's, that's not really necessarily a complaint because, again, the, these movies are what they are. The, the whole yeah. series. You're asking a lot for any of these sort of like Hello. Hey, hey, the signal's starting to work. <laughs> I have been corrected. These movies are very good. You should purchase them on DVD, Blu-ray, or streaming services of your choice. Thank you. I have what? been corrected. What about Betamax? You know, Paramount got some. <laughs> so, yeah, anything else you guys want to mention before we go ahead and rate this movie? Nah. Okay. All right. Well, Randy, why don't you kick us off out of five? How do you feel about Friday the 13th, part four, the final chapter? I think this is one of my um, more liked Friday the, ter- Friday the 13th movies. It's definitely not my top. That goes to six or one, depending on how my day is going. Um, but it's up there. I mean, out of the, what is it, 11 now that they've made, including remakes and shit, it's like probably more than that. 12. If it's you 12. count Freddy vs. Jason, it's 12. Of Jesus. Course. Well, yeah, I would put that up towards. I, I I like, I like this one pretty good. It's top five material for me. Um, I love, like, there's a lot of things in this that have nothing to do with Jason that I like, which is what pretty much separates this movie from any of the others at all. And that's you have Feldman doing a pretty pretty badass job as little like Macaulay Culkin running around trying to fuck over Jason. And also like some neat prosthetics, which are a little unnecessary. And then you have Crispin Glovin just Crispin Glovin out, like just doing his Glovin all over the place. Make McGlovin. McGlovin. <laughs> yeah, he's all over it. I though, and then you have like the Hitchhiker, which to me is very like I think about the hit when I think about the series. That's one of the things that come to mind, be, to for me because it's so like I don't know. It, it left an impression on me. I was like, this poor woman, she just wants to get to fucking Canada, and this movie hates her so bad. This movie wants her so dead. And it's like it's like they wanted her to be a cooter, but instead they, every justification you could think of for being a cooter is really fucked up in its own right. <laughs> it's like, instead of having her like go kick a puppy or something, they have her be a fat person. Um, <laughs> like It's terrible. So anyway, without harping on that any further, I like this movie, but it is what it is. It's a little goofy. It's a lot goofy. Um, it's fun enough for uh, a romp, and I would give it probably a 2.5. 2.5. Juice, how do you feel out of five? Um, yeah, I, uh, I like it as the Friday the 13th movie, too. But like I said, there's nothing particularly iconic. And even like some of the kills were kind of bland to me. <clears throat> the first thing where I was saying like, oh, it had a lot of great kills. But I don't know. The harpoon through the dong was memorable. A bunch of bitches <laughs> get thrown out a window. The dog. <laughs> like, like, I don't know. And the oh, God, he's killing me. That shit was just funny. Um <laughs> I don't know. The one dude gets stabbed through the film or like the, uh, the projector know, screen. The projector screen. Yeah. And one dude dies in the shower. One shit gets like an axe through the door. I mean, See, none the of shower it's like kill per- was cool. That was a, a head crush kill. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. So there wasn't a lot of like where I was like, oh man, that kill really got him. I don't like. Did one chick got stabbed in the crazy. raft? Like a bunch of people just get stabbed or head crushed. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but it was funny. Like it was enjoyable, even for a movie that has like no distinct characters, really. Like nobody has a real kind of personality what about Jimbo? and there's no like real story that you can hang your hat on. You know, I mean, there's just, but despite all those things, it's enjoyable. It's funny. Um, and I had a good time with it. So for, <laughs> For a film that's the fourth in a series that doesn't have particularly a lot of distinct kills to me to still be enjoyable, like, that's impressive. So there's something to that. <laughs> um, uh, and I was, so I'm going to give it a two. And then, of course, the half star for the Yabos. 
So we're going to end it at a 2.5. Bob was trying to stack the Yabos. Bob was texting me like, oh, this movie's got to be a five because all the Yabos. I was like, you can't stack them, Bob. I if believe... that were the case, Serbian film would have been five star. You can't this stack is... them. You know the rules. I believe what I said was it, if you went by pure Yabos math, this it would be a baseline two and a half. I think if I did the math correctly, and then you would then you'd add from there from. Oh the rest God! Of the movie. Can we not but do was, math based on Yabos, please? I was corrected. I was corrected. <laughs> There's no need because you can't stack them. It's a pure point five, and that's all you get. That's right. Justin makes the rules. We got to follow him. He's, he's the commish, <laughs> the Yabos commish here. Good lord. Um, yeah, it's terrible. So I love this movie, man. I for some reason this franchise this is it has like such a. a I've got a soft spot for it. I don't know. These movies are dumb as hell. They're like I said, they're kind of meat and potatoes. It's just like stupid horny teens by the lake getting killed in like fun ways. And there's really not a whole lot more going on other than that. But I always find them very fun watches. Um, this one is definitely one of my favorites of the franchise. And like, yeah, I mean, I guess there aren't any like greatly drawn characters in this, but they're, they're distinct enough for me to remember a lot of them. Like Axel at the beginning fucking cracks me up. He's a terrible shitbag. I guess a lot of them are kind of shitbags. Chris Van Glover, also a shitbag, but he's funny in his like dance moves and like, the lines that he delivers are terrible. Um, you got fucking Tommy Jarvis, who's a badass motherfucker, like fixing the car, putting the power back on. He fixes the telephone. He's basically just like on his own. He creates all these amazing props and masks and shit. He somehow manages to kill Jason in the end. He's like the most badass little kid ever. The mom is just like kind of a mom. She does her job well or whatever. She's the mom? Got, she's, the, she's the your mom, you know? She's what happened mom. to the mom? I can't even remember. She Yoga practice. Got, she got killed. She went for like a jog in, in the rain for some reason and came home. And she I think she got back. killed off. I think she got killed off screen, actually. Maybe that's why I can't remember what happened. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, I don't know. The the dog scene, the, the Rob, the hunter. Like, I don't know. They're, they're distinct enough characters in here. You got the, the twins. I don't know. It's it's it is what it is. But I and I have I always have a fun time watching this movie. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I like the kills too. They're probably not the best kills in the franchise, but they're good enough. They get me by. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to give it a four and a half. I love this movie. Wow. wow. Does that, is that, that include the Yabos? I don't, I don't fucking do that shit. That's just just me neither, but I refuse that to sing to is that the level. explanation I could think of. I refuse. <laughs> you I'm you not give be that so guy. Usually, you give Sleepaway Camp a five star because it's got a little dong at the end. That's true. That's the only reason I like that movie. <laughs> I, I sit through 90 minutes just to see a little dong hanging for like a half a second at the end of Sleepaway Camp. Fucking spoilers, by the way. Fuck. Probably shouldn't be talking about that. On the off chance uh, that our listeners haven't actually seen that. That's movie. true. My bad. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know the penis. They don't, know. they don't know whose penis it is. It could be our, anybody's. Our aggregate is going to be a 3.2 for this movie. Um, one, thing, <laughs> one thing we forgot to do before we get into the Rotten Tomatoes segment, we got to talk about the Cooter. Juice, who is the Cooter of the week? Well, uh, as you know, this is a uh, uh, 80s film, right? Wait, when did this come out? 84. 84, mm -hmm. yeah, of yeah. course. And that was the golden age. Everybody had it down back then. And uh, this is no exception. There's a, a lot of potential for Cooter of the Week here. Um, I, I'm i inclined to give it to Axel, myself. Yeah. But, I mean, it could go to, to Teddy. It could go to um, maybe even Jorts. Uh, and maybe even... Uh, Oh, Crispin. I mean, yeah. it really like any of like the main guys, except for the hunter guy, the impotent hunter. Um, <laughs> That's how he's <laughs> um, there's I mean, it really could be. I, I mean, I'm inclined to give it more to Axel. He seems like more of just a straight up shitbag, mainly, I guess, because 
he's taught he's like sexually objectifying a dead girl in his morgue which is yeah, i think uh, really sets a pretty him high crime of kudos. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean that's that's pretty shitty and, and of course of humanity to, i guess and he's got that <laughs> shitty, like, smug arrogance he kind of uses to try to seduce the nurse or whatever, which, I mean, fuck that chick, because if you're, if you're seduced by that guy, then, I mean, there's something wrong with you as well, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> I don't, man. You I, see that V-neck? He's wearing it pretty good. Oh, dude, man. So I would think I would give it to Axel. Yeah. I, right. I mean, I, I think I agree. He gets Axel he gets the Snacksel. Teddy yeah, is a, a close fucking second for me, but, who? but uh, Teddy. Teddy is a close second. Yeah, he's just, yeah, and he's like a pain. Um, it's a, he just treats Crispin kind of like shit, you know, after like Crispin yeah. like kind of bitches out and it's like, oh, don't call me that. But, um, but yeah, I, I would give it to Axel. This movie is it's it's the it's the frog in hot water situation where there's just cooters everywhere. So how do you how, <laughs> how does one rise to the top? Yeah. Um. I, we've got a problem, boys. What's, what's that? What's that? Um. I can't lock down the Rotten Tomatoes. I like the site is messed up. Maybe somebody else wants to I give it a try. It. Uh, okay. I can try it. So we'll see if it pulls up for you because I can't pull it up on my phone or my. Like specific, like the website comes up, but not this entry. Like it's it's huh. it gives me the option, but oh yeah, that's not working. Oh okay. Well, this is Hang what on, maybe I can with... IMDb. Oh, wait, wait, I got it. I got it. Did no, you? No. Okay. No, I cool. may not have actually. This is just I was okay. I was trying like since the beginning. Nope, it's not working. Of... Yeah. Okay. So it's something with the site, and not just right. I could pull up Rotten Tomatoes. It's something. Like specifically this entry, which is weird. That is some shit fucking timing right there. I okay, know. I got, maybe I have at least the critic score, but I have no information beyond that. Okay. Uh, well, well we, we, can, we can do that. Then. Play. You can do that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, let me drop the old bumper. Take it away, dog. This is how professional we are. Um, okay. <laughs> So what we're going to do here is I'm going to we're going to go around these two guys and have them each try take a stab at guessing what the critic consensus is about this film, Friday the 13th, the final chapter. So um, why don't we start with Juice since you never get to go? What do you think out of 100 percent, zero to 100 percent? All right, man, I haven't got to play in a long time. Uh, Critic score on this. Uh, oh, and we have no info either. Mm, I'm going to say. Thirty-five percent. Ooh, okay. Bob, that's about what I was thinking. Uh, I'll go. I'll just go thirty. Okay. All right. Uh, Bobby is gonna take it. It is twenty-five oh. percent. This movie's a hot, <laughs> it's a hot quarter of shit. So. <laughs> No, I have no further information, but I don't think we really need it because it's pretty self-evident, I would say, as to why critics wouldn't particularly be drawn to this film. Yeah, um, it's um, yeah, like I said, there's no real story. There's no. Yeah, I mean, Actually, I guess the the characters are distinct in a way, but not in like that they're real characters. <laughs> Just right, in that yeah, you can say like that guy wears jorts. Yeah, this is another that. example of a movie that is uh, best praised on the metric of whether or not it's enjoyable <laughs> yeah, yeah whether or not it's quality um yeah uh i do have actually one piece of critical uh review that i can read from the trivia section i was going to save this for the end of the trivia section because it's so great but um this uh movie distinguished film critic robert ebert called this film and i quote an immoral and reprehensible piece of trash. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> That's my boy. Oh, oh, E.B. I want to give you five stars now. Can I it's not score? that bad. It's certainly not a 4.5 good. That's it's, why Bob... Bob can't be trusted with slashers, apparently. I mean, that's the same score he spot. gave... It's the same score he gave Halloween... 20 whatever 2018 what year i think I yeah so i mean you just can't <laughs> trust bob that's that's the whole thing here that's the point i was trying to make with halloween 2018 you can't trust bob 
He gives Sleepaway Camp a five star. He gives Friday the 13th part hey, four a hey, four. Hey, 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 <laughs> you can give movies whatever score you think they deserve. <laughs> I'll do the fucking same, man. I'm just trying to set a precedent, Rod, that when people oh, hear your God. scores, they need to understand what they're oh, getting into. God. I think it's important to note that Sleepaway Camp is a fucking great movie, and anybody who does not think so is welcome to lick my butthole. Ooh, Thank Randy, you, Randy. wow. <laughs> Bex Super is going to be jealous. Oh, <laughs> chill. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, Randy, why don't you uh, hit us with the rest of that trivia, sir? Sure thing. Uh, so we, we got a little bit of trivia here. I've already spilled some of the beans on it, but we'll go down the list here that I have. Let's see. During filming, Kimberly Beck, who plays Trish, experienced strange occurrences, including a man watching her while she ran in the park and strange phone calls at all hours. This stopped when production was over. So that's left for us to speculate about wildly. And <laughs> so I'm going to assume cameraman. Or... I'm Sounds assuming like that Jason's real and he was that... making prank calls. It's inspiration for the movie Director's Cut that I was talking about. Ah, there you yeah, go. I guess so. It's, yeah. It was all, it was all Pendulette. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, just for uh, the since we're bringing up the Yabos, there's some Yabos trivia here. Barbara Howard used a body double for her shower sex scene, so hey. not Barbara's Yabos. It Let was it all done. about well, it was all about the booty in the sex scene. I mean, in the shower scene, it was just pressed you... up against that glass. Yeah, I was saying, I don't think you, you not see her. I'm thinking not the yabos, but that's why it was probably easy well, get to get booty. a body double because it was just like the back. Yeah, it was just the booty pressed up against the sugar glass or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pour man. one out for all the windows in this movie. Good lord, they didn't stand a chance. Yeah, because he even breaks that. Yeah, the the shower glass, sure. like everything is broken. <laughs> they got it. a sale. <laughs> so, I got two more piece of Yabos trivia for you here. Ooh, Damn, oh, Randy. Uh, it is played. This is a longer one. It is played for humor throughout the final chapter that young Tommy Jarvis is Corey Feldman is suddenly surrounded by horny teenagers renting a cabin he can see into from his own house. However, the reality of the situation is that those actresses were indeed very or partially naked. And Corey Feldman was still young enough that Eric Anderson and Kimberly Beck took him trick-or-treating the first day of filming since it happened to be October 31st. So yeah. they shielded 12-year-old Corey Feldman from most of the bad stuff using tricky editing when necessary. What they could not control, however, was the power of a low-cut low cut top sans bra underneath. According to Feldman, in the scene in which Jody Aronson's character bends over to greet Tommy's dog, unbeknownst to anyone but Feldman, he could see down her low-cut top. So there you go. Your uh, Yabo's... <laughs> Trivia number two featuring <laughs> a minor. Yeah, we There's... forgot to talk about that scene where he sees them naked in the window and he's like hopping around on his bed yeah. like, like a fucking chimpanzee or something. <laughs> what the fuck? That's, he was uh... stoked. He's a kid who's isolated out in the wilderness. He's about to see his first Yabos. He's, he's never seen like a clothed Yabo. <laughs> It's weird. It's weird, man. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I remember yeah, it's, my it's kind of weird. spy. No, oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> Randy. <laughs> Uh, and, that's you, terrible. and you guys get on to me for talking about marshmallow yabos. I mean, come this on. This movie, if you're going to talk about yabos, <laughs> this is the way to do it. In. Is, there's nothing but yabos in this movie. So, um, <laughs> writer Barney Cohen originally wrote a scene involving Jason fondling Trish's breasts, but the producers uh. vetoed it. Director Joseph yeah. Zito also disliked the scene because it made Jason seem too human and less menacing, so the scene was excised. Yeah, that doesn't work. First that. of all, for Jason's character, whatever you, whatever character you want to apply to him at any given time, but I mean that's also like you're going into Last House on the Left territory there. That's pretty fucked up for a movie that has Chris Ben Glover da dancing the way he does in it. It's a little yeah. too fucked that, up. It's goofy movie. We don't. I would have not fit the tone. We don't. Yeah, we don't need. We don't need any of that. We don't need that reanimator shit in here. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Um, okay. Joseph Zito had previously directed The Prowler in 81, but they wanted him to direct both direct and write Friday the 13th Part 4. He said, quote, but I'm not a writer, to which they said, here's a contract paying you double to write and direct. And he responded, yeah, I'm totally a writer. 
Zeke <laughs> used the extra salary to hire Barney Cohen to somewhat secretly write the script. Their process entailed Zito talking nightly, t- taking nightly one-hour phone calls with Phil Scuderi to discuss the story and the script for the final chapter. The next day, Zito would meet Cohen in an apartment in New York to relay their notes and ideas Scuderi had offered, which they would turn into a new script and turn into new script pages and sent to be sent in later that day. In, to Scuderi in Boston to be discussed over again on the phone that night. So this movie was hacked together with fucking like a fucking crew of people that none of which were like particularly interested in writing it. Um, I don't know if that uh, says a lot to you guys, but it does to me. Makes sense. Yeah. I mean, there is like no plot. It's just teens want to yeah. bang. And, yeah. Kids want to bang and Jason wants to kill. That's that's the hunter the aspect is kind of original, even though he doesn't do anything. And yeah. then it... he's not the first character like he's or he's not the first. He is the first, but he's not the only character like that in the Friday Thirteenth series, though. Yeah. Fucking again, Jason goes to hell. What the fuck? I like it. When there there was somebody in six too that's kind of like that, right? Was it like a police Jarvis officer was... or something? No, Jar- in six it's Jarvis as an adult. Oh yeah, okay. But I, they all just kind of work. They all just like that one kind of works. But like to me, it works. But because he's a continued character at least. But then you have fucking anyway. That's a whole thing. Yeah. Um, Jason actor Ted White and special effects artist Tom Savini at first were confrontational with each other, but once White found out Savini had experience with stunts, the two became friends. So there you go. Yeah. And furthering that, uh, <laughs> Ted White. Due to the production's low budget, several actors had to perform an uncomfortable or dangerous stunts themselves, including Judy Aronson, who was required to remain submerged in a lake in near-freezing temperatures, and Peter Barton, who was actually slammed into the shower wall when Jason attacks him. Damn. Ted White also portrays Jason, advocated for several of the actors, requesting that Barton be allowed to use a crash pad and threatening to quit when director Joseph Zito refused to allow Aronson to get out of the lake between takes. White and Zito ultimately developed a combative relationship uh, relationship on set, which resulted in White demanding his name be removed from the credits, calling it, quote, a piece of shit. <laughs> I don't blame him. That's pretty fucked up. That, that is, yeah, that is up. super fucked up. I don't know. Damn. That's pretty much all I got. The last thing was about the poor hitchhiker being called Fat Girl. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, would, I don't know if I'd sit and, like, let somebody, like, put a person in fucking sub-zero temperatures for extended periods of time so they can make this movie of anything. Yeah, that's the thing. It's not like it's this is not, not like this, this is, is not cinematic gladiator. gold. You're you're shooting, you know, for awards here. I mean, come on. Like you're literally you, you got your double trip. money for piecing this shit story together. Don't be a dick to the actresses I'm sure you're paying fucking peanuts to. Don't, so don't there taint you go. this movie. You're tainting it. Don't do it. Don't taint it with <laughs> I'm your I'm sorry trivia. for the reality your check. Facts. With your information. Uh, let's round the show up with a bit of news. All right, fellas. So, like, the biggest thing I think we got to talk about is this Candyman remake that's set for release for 2020. It's going to be... Uh, written and produced by Mr. Jordan Peele, and it's going to be directed by Nia DaCosta, who I guess uh, directed Little Woods. I've never seen that. I don't. I don't know what that is exactly. Uh, I, I feel know. like I feel like this is the prime opportunity. Actually, the first time I saw this headline, I was like, "This is Randy's movie. This is it. This is where me and Bob are going to be like, hey, that was pretty good,' or like we're going <laughs> to dig it." And Randy likes oh, Candyman yeah. so much that he's just, it's going to really chap his ass. This shits, is prime shit on it hard. territory for Way Randy. too hard, right. even for my own true feelings for it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. My, uh, I mean, yeah, I guess that's true. I could totally just decide now that I'm going to hate this movie. <laughs> but Go instead, ahead. I think what I'm going to do is say that I, I like the original a lot. That's for sure. And... I didn't really watch the whole series of the original, which I don't think is necessary at this point. I mean, maybe yeah. it is. I don't know. I'm sure the I fans like the would disagree. One. The second one's pretty cool. You know, I yeah. Well, um, I I I love Jordan Peele and like what he's doing in horror so far. And what he's done in horror so far is obviously fucking huge. So I mean, I'm willing to put 
faith in it that it's going to be like not terrible at least. And I, I don't love that they're using him for remakes at this point in his career when they're they're basically doing the stock standard thing where they're you know somebody has a pretty good original thing and so they try and squeeze them into every intellectual property that they can't trust anybody else and then yeah. it tanks their career slightly for a while um, or they go off on it one or the other. So I don't know. I, it could go real bad, but you know, I'm willing to go that route because Jordan's on it, and I like the original material. I think there's a lot they could say with you know following the themes of the original, but you know, set with more modern, you know, modern fears and concerns. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm I'm willing to give it a shot. I'm, I wouldn't say I'm crazy excited about it because it is at the end of the day still a remake. But I'm excited primarily because it's a Jordan Peele movie. I would say. Me too. I agree. He's not directing it, but he's going to have his fingerprints on it, which is cool yeah. enough, I think. I'm more interested in him and like his what he is creating himself. You know, it, remakes are inherently, for the most part, just less interesting. Um, but I, I'm I'm still down for this because, like you said, they can they could definitely modernize it. And, There's a uh, lot to say about the themes in the, the in yeah. the original oh, that yeah. have changed in the last thirty years. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's gonna be. Oh man, we probably should have picked that one for our poll pick too. We covered we covered Candyman way back in the day, don't we? Yeah, we did. long long time ago. Man, there's just too many. We'll have to follow up again, maybe in the summer or something. Let's yeah, do it. Okay. So this is gonna be released June twelfth, twenty twenty. I'm sure we'll be talking about it. Yeah. Uh, we'll... If the... we're still going, then you know that'll be you know five and a half years or six. Oh, I, I plan know. to be dead. Good by Five and a half. Yeah, Randy doesn't have another year and a half in him. Nope. I don't know. It'll be coming up on six because don't we hit it? We hit the year mark in so, September, right? Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty close. So it'll be, oh my God. <laughs> Damn, son. You gotta be playing that 10 year anniversary soon enough. God, yeah, right? Six oh years my right God. around the corner. Don't put that hell on me. <laughs> <laughs> that curse. We'll be millionaires off our marshmallow yabo cereal. We'll Patreon millionaires, <laughs> a wide field of us all living off fucking we'll private be... islands with yachts and shit because of Patreon. We'll be yabo, cereal yabo. cereal barons, you know. It's all How about many boxes of cereal you gotta sell to be a millionaire. <laughs> like, come on. These little not not to mention I can't we just gotta stop talking about it. Not to mention most people who eat cereal is children. I don't know that their mom's gonna buy that shit for them. <laughs> The next, thing we talk about, the next thing we got to talk about, the single fathers will, uh, Mike Flanagan wrapped filming on his next project, which is Dr. Sleep, uh, based on Stephen King's novel, which is a sequel to The Shining. I've never read it. I, I don't know exactly what it is about, um, but I'm it's not... set for a release date of January 24th, 2020. So we already got two movies coming out 2020 we're, we're going to need to talk about. Um, uh, how do you guys feel about uh, Dr. Sleep? I feel exactly what I said about the the Candyman thing. It's Mike Flanagan is facing some success. They put him on Hill House, and he adapted that well. And now they're just throwing him right back onto the like into the landmine fucking pen, where he's attached to this thing that honestly, I I mean, there are people that like read the book and really loved it and all this stuff like. Stephen King fans apparently have no problem with Dr. Sleep, but at least as a Shining fan, I I don't really need to see what fucking Danny Torrance is up to at all. I mean, maybe it's great, and I'm willing to give it that shot because Stephen King actually wrote the original, and hopefully he has some say, and like I, he usually does, I think, has some say in how the script is going to be written. Um, and I love Mike Flanagan right now, so, I mean, I'll give it a shot, but there's not a whole lot of a appealing to me about that content yeah i'm i am way in for flanagan now after watching gerald's game which you know just knowing like what what he had to adapt like it's you know it all takes place in one room the the woman is chained to a bed everything's happening in her mind basically and after watching that movie he adapted it so wonderfully and it seemed like basically impossible to to do that but he did such a good job on it and then after watching haunting on hill house fucking great like i don't know I'm, I'm on board i i trust the man at this point i think he's earned it um so i'm, I'm looking forward to it see what he see what he can do with it. i still haven't seen gerald's game i need to do that but 
It's good. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe it'll work out. Maybe he'll be like the the adaptation guy who can't do wrong, but I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> we'll find out in 2020. Uh, the last bit of news I had for you fellas is the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina season two already has a trailer, already has a release date, and that release date is April 5th, 2019, which is like six months after the first season dropped. So, oh, they, weird. They must have filmed this all at once, I guess. I don't know. They would yeah, almost have like had to. It yeah. just it dropped at the end of October, like maybe a week before Halloween, I feel like. Yeah, it was like the. 18th or something like so, that yeah something so, so there's no way especially if they already have a trailer they had to have filmed it all together yeah it's, and oh, they're gonna man. have a holiday special drop sometime this month I oh, really yeah. Yeah. christmas yeah yeah, yeah. that's int- they're going going british on this shit making yeah. the holiday yeah. special yeah i don't i just i don't know i feel like i should finish it it just wasn't good enough <laughs> to I really pull me way. back I feel yeah. the same way. It was kind of a chore to get to episode like four or five or wherever I stopped. It was just, I yeah. wasn't it. I think I stopped at maybe six or seven. I think there's only ten, so I'm close. Yeah. But yeah. even per episode, I would have to stop like at least once or twice and like go <laughs> do something else. I was and come Damn. back later. I was just like, oh, this is not that good. Yeah, I Bummer. wasn't loving it, and I, you know, with this news, seeing as how you're going to get a shit ton more, like right around the corner, I kind of wish I did like it, and have something to look forward to in April. Yeah, I, don't I would know, love, man. love a horror, like a horror holiday special. Like that sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you know, but you I'm get not going to know what the fuck's going on. You get one every month on Hulu, dog, with that Into the Dark series. Yeah, well, no, I mean, I meant like for Christmas holidays specifically, or like winter holidays but yeah i understand what you're saying you don't have to keep nodding so I'm... you're gonna get one <laughs> I, have, I, I don't have hulu Friday, actually. it's actually a Don't problem no it's actually, we need a corporate account <laughs> i'll let you borrow my password it's good it's fucking good uh, so far anyways there's only two but i recommend that shit if you have hulu into the dark watch that shit the christmas one drops this friday it looks weird <laughs> in, a, in a good way it looks it looks weird in a good way uh anyway that's it for horror news. That's going to be it for the show tonight. Uh, once again, big thanks to Jose for supporting us on Patreon, for choosing such a dope movie for us to, to talk about. We appreciate the hell out of it. Uh, thank you, sir. And we appreciate everybody that supports us on Patreon. For sure, you guys help us keep the lights on around here. And we it means a lot to us. It really does. Thank you. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention, episode 200 is like right around the corner. Um, we're going to try and do something a little different for that. Most of it sh- is we're going to try and keep most of it a surprise, but one thing we are going to try and do is like a Q and a session for that, um, episode. So if you have any questions for anyone that's on the show, any of the hosts, um, just send, start sending them our way and we're going to like compile them and make a Q and a session for that episode 200. Um, you could send them to us pretty much through any of our social media websites. If you want, um, whatever's most convenient for you. Um, as always, we're on Twitter at str8 underscore chilling. We're on Instagram at straight chilling podcast. You can send us an email through the website, straight chilling podcast.com. If you're on the Slack channel, you can hit us up on Slack. Uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, and also don't forget we're on YouTube now. Um, you're going to get a video feed of all of our episodes on YouTube from now until forever. And then some other stuff too. You get a little, yeah, actually you get, we're like doubling down on YouTube. There's a. Uh, each episode you'll have a uh, purely audio choice which will have like all the bumpers and everything right. just like you would listen on spotify or itunes or wherever you listen and then we also just have a separate video feed as well which um isn't as polished i guess it's just um lacking kind of the bumpers and everything but it's how the sausage is made behind the scenes you get to see our our ugly mugs up here talking yep. about some bullshit. So <laughs> two, two, two options on the YouTube channel. Now each week you get the audio form or the video form a little bit different, but same content otherwise. Yep. Yep. Uh, so yeah, start shooting your questions our way. They can be about horror. They can be about literally anything you want. Anybody, did you just say shitting your way? question? Sh- shooting. I said shooting. Maybe if, 
I guess it sounded like shit. Start it shitting your questions like our shit. way, <laughs> uh, shit lord motherfuckers. Yeah, Me and do. Randy were yeah, both like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see our confused, gaping faces at that comment, <laughs> point us on you YouTube. You can see it on YouTube. Confused, gaping faces. Shit, yeah. So send your questions our way. They can be about whatever you want, and we'll uh, address them on episode 200, which is like nine weeks away, which is fucking crazy. Anyways, uh, next week we're, we're going to be back with a new show. We're going to be talking about Anna and the Apocalypse for real this time. Um, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, assuming we can all watch it. Put your eyeballs on that. It's a Christmas zombie horror musical thing. I don't know. It looks, it looks interesting. Check it out. So you'll be ready for the show any. next week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, welcome to the show, Randy. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's going to do it for us. Until next week, as always, everybody, please keep chilling. Oof.